days left. I don't know where the time has gone. We've got four days left in Barcelona, and then we've got a thousand mile drive back. The only difference being this time, we don't have to book any ferries, at least immediately anyway. We can just turn up to Calais, so it's going to be very relaxing, but I don't know where the time's gone. Okay, Friday morning, just had our coffee and cake, and with talk of possible recession coming, I find it important to support the local economy, so don't just go out there and get a coffee. Grab a cake as well. It's a selfless act. Teaming up today with Car Vertical, and I'm going to discuss one of my favorite cars, in fact, my dream car, a car that I bought. I want to say on my 30th birthday, but it's just after. I thought, as a treat to myself, right, that's it. If not now, then when? I'm going to go out there and buy a Jaguar XK. At the time when I bought it, I think it was around about, probably 13 years old or so. Maybe, actually, maybe even 12 years old or so. It cost me 10,000 pounds. How long ago? Six years ago. We were, Monica and I were in Tenerife at the time, and all I could be thinking about for about six months building up was buying this Jaguar XK. The problem was we were in Tenerife, and I was wasting all my time on Auto Trader. I finally decided to buy it, but I got so overexcited, I flew back from Tenerife, got a flight into London, then drove up to, or then got a train up to Birmingham, picked up the Jaguar, drove from Birmingham back to London, parked it up, then got on a flight for my last two weeks in Tenerife. It was my dream car, and I owned it for a year. But after six months of owning it, I ran out of money. And the business I had stopped making any money at all. So I couldn't afford to maintain it. So I spent six months parked in my underground car park, in my parking spot. And I ended up losing £3,000 for it. I bought it for 10k, sold it for 7k, and I spent about £2,500 on maintenance. And ever since that car, I've been freaked out with buying anything expensive. So I'm now going to check because this is the truth. I had suspicions about this car when I bought it. Mm -hmm. It looked lovely in the photos. I bought it completely unseen apart from photos. I traveled to Birmingham, it was a long journey, it cost a lot of money to get there and I got there and one of the panels was a slightly different color but I did not want to waste the journey. <laughs> so I decided to buy it anyway. And I always wondered if that was a mistake because the bodywork didn't match up slightly on one of the panels. So now I'm going to once and for all find out what was the history on my Jag XK and onto the car vertical website. I've typed in the registration there. It's going to check a huge amount of different sources. Of course, it can do it for motorbikes as well, but I've just decided to do for a car. So confirm check. Here we go. I never thought of doing this when I was in Tenerife. Never even considered ever doing a, a check on a vehicle. So it checks law enforcement agencies. It will check authorized workshops if it's ever had any, you know, excess work done to it, if it's ever been imported, if it's ever been written off in many different countries. Going through the dealer data now. Car marketplaces. See, it's very in-depth. It takes, you know, it takes a, a minute or two, 68%. I've got to say, when I owned this car for the short time that I owned it, it was the most beautiful experience when it wasn't broken the just uh, the feeling of owning my dream car i still remember the yeah. evening when i picked it up driving home i had my favorite song of the time i'm just sort of cruising along the motorway about 80 miles an hour and i thought <laughs> but i wasn't allowed to drive it you weren't allowed to drive it no but i thought when driving it you've done it fred you've made it and then it turned into a living hell, only a car that I couldn't afford to run. Because by the end of it, I was borderline on minimum wage trying to run this car. And, it was just, mm. and uh, we drove to Lithuania. Well. We drove to Lithuania in it, which was, I think, about a three or four thousand mile round trip, including driving around Lithuania. We did. Well, I got on the autobahn with this car, and I did 155 miles an hour on the autobahn with Monica screaming, <laughs> begging me to stop. But I had to hit the max of 155. Okay, here we go. It's in. Right, mileage, no fraud detected. Well, that's fine because I bought it on about 150,000 miles because it was the cheapest one anywhere available. <gasps> okay, I promise I always do these the first time ever on here. <laughs> mileage, fine. No one's going to fraud doing almost 200,000 miles. Theft, fine. The vehicle is not stolen. Boom. Accident, 
accidents. I'll, I'll show you on the screen recording yeah. here. This vehicle was damaged. Oh God, you know what? That was me. Tires on minimum limit. I remember having to sell it and the tires, they said if they'd have done about another 200 miles, it would have failed an MOT, but I couldn't afford to change the tires before I sold it. <laughs> and that was me. Uh, tires on the minimum limit. God, it's like going back in time here. Okay, right, here we go. Records found. Well, it says the vehicle was exported in 2019, so very possibly the vehicle was exported, which is interesting, but let me see what's going on with this crash. Okay, I'm on to damage. Oh. Wow. Okay. No, no, no. This is July 2018. Mm -hmm. July 2018. The vehicle was a write-off. No. And then again in May 2019. And when did you sell it? Uh, I sold it 2017. A year after I had it, it was written off. No. Wow. And then repair costs. Yeah, so it's gone. Wow, that's a shame. Yeah, it's gone, but actually, there was no issue when I had it. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. That could potentially be the end of the Jag, but when I had it, it was all fine. I'll tell you what I have to do just to end this. I don't know if we've already put some pictures up there, but just, just have a look <laughs> at some of these pics there of the Jag. Maybe there'll be some here of my time in Lithuania. <laughs> Maybe some of their happy I'll play, moments. I'll, I'll play a uh, sad song. Play some sad songs with that, yeah. <laughs> A, a lot of people. You said you want to buy it again. It's the only car I've ever owned that I genuinely want to buy back again. So there it is, my Jag. One day I think I'll own that car again. Maybe after the Fiat. Maybe. I don't know. I keep changing my mind. But there it is. It looks fine, actually, the Jag, to be fair. Nothing at least legally written off or anything untowards when I owned it. So I would have been fine with that. I can't believe the only vehicle so far that's had an issue is the vehicle that I spent proper money on and you know, really focused on buying a good one, which was the Bonneville. So the only vehicle that I've spent more than the minimum I needed to was the Bonneville, and that's the only one that's been written off. It's fascinating the way it works. You can't always trust, you know, just looking at a good quality vehicle or something that looks good. It's really interesting. So let's tuck into our coffees, but Jag all okay, but sadly, I think it may be gone now. I would say, would you say, Monica, our favorite coffee shop in Barcelona? Yeah, it's the best coffee shop, I think, in Barcelona. It's really amazing, the coffee quality, the cake, carrot cake now, cannot stop eating it, I love it, but it's amazing coffee, sweet lima, highly recommend coming here, it's a brilliant coffee shop. I know it sounds weird, the loo's also really nice as well, <laughs> like, I always like a nice loo, and they're right behind there, great loo's. I think I'll do a bit of a, a day in the life today, so I'm going to take you around with me to a few shops, Monica I think has popped in to to one of these shops somewhere, but there are two places that I really want to check out. One of them I walked past but didn't go in. So I thought a bird was about to poo on me there. One of them is a, an electric bicycle shop. It may not sound the most exciting, but these are retro styled electric bikes. And just looking at the shop front a few days ago, it looks really, really interesting. It was closed last time I went, so I'm going to go see if it's open now, and I'll take you with me and show you some of those because they look brilliant. The second is Royal Enfield because I've been addicted to Shantaram, which is a brand new series on Apple TV. In essence, Charlie Hunnam playing an Australian convict who flees to India in, I think, the 1980s. He ends up befriending a load of gangsters, gets given a Royal Enfield, and it's just about his adventures and his life. It's meant to be pretty much based on a true story. And in the series Shantaram, Charlie Hunnam is given a Royal Enfield bullet by a gangster. Oh, I'm just seeing that bullet just flash up for the first time in the series. It's a fine sight, and I think Royal Enfield in Barcelona may well have a few old bullets, so I would actually love to see one in the flesh because it's not a bike I've really ever seen before, and I'd just be very curious. I'm not getting ahead of myself, I'm not looking to buy, but I just really would love to see one because they're, they're just, for me, they're works of art. I would love to go and see one. So I'm going to take you along to both of those places, assuming we make it and they're open, and, well, just come along with us. Friday in Barcelona. We'll do a 360 because so, so beautiful everywhere here.
you found it. And it's open. How do you say that? A, I think that's an A. A volt. Looks good. Looks very good, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, I got the name wrong initially because I couldn't see that R. It's Ray Volt. So, I've just been having a chat to them here, and these are actually they're even a little bit better looking than I thought they'd be. So, they're all electric bikes, range of around about 60, I think they said 60 kilometers or so. And the price range around about two and a half thousand pounds to about three and a half thousand pounds or so. But I love, this is what I love about them. The retro style, but also the batteries here, they're all removable. And they all come in these retro style pouches. Huge amount of different styles. All of them retro styles. And you can see here, you just open this battery pack up, take it out. And for example, if you live in an apartment, you can charge it upstairs. Thick, chunky tires, beautiful little lights on the front, and then you've got the super retro style, borderline racing style bikes here. And this is the battery in here, again, that you just unclip with these beautiful clips. Take it upstairs, charge it, 60 kilometers of range. And look at all the accessories as well. I did ask, they've got a few uh, distributors in the UK, so you can actually get one of these in the UK. I think they're borderline, actually sell them almost worldwide. And look at the detail on the back of that, the kind of bronze colored rear drum. And this is a place for the battery. It's like a work of art. And then they've got their workshop through the back, just there. Service center, with a few of them being worked on. What a fantastic place. Thank you so much, thank you. Ciao. You too. Well, that's very impressive, genuinely impressive. Two and a half to three and a half K for a really beautifully designed electric bike. You know, seeing stuff like that, it really gives me an idea and a feel of, you know, where we could be going with electric motorcycles. I think it's perfectly possible to make a really beautifully designed electric motorbike. At the moment, you know, most of the ones coming out, if you look at Triumph or even Harley Davidson with the live wire, they're going super modern style. Uh, you know, in, a, in essence, super naked ultra futuristic super naked as opposed to making uh, a, you know an electric Bonneville which I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in so this I find it really interesting because it shows it can be done you can integrate an electric motor you know in a clever way to make a really nice appealing retro styled genuinely cool and stylish electric bike so I'm excited. I think that's really good value. You know, that's a lovely mode of transport if you've got a bit of space to keep the bike and obviously you can just take it upstairs to charge overnight so you don't have to worry about, you know, any kind of charges. And it's exactly the same principle for electric motorbikes. They only really work in my eyes if it can be a removable battery. If it's not a removable battery for me, it probably doesn't work.
this is a positive start just to wipe Royal Enfield Classic 500. This is just like the one I tested in Tenerife. Look, kick start. You know, we're going to miss bikes like this when everything's electrified. And in that color, with the pannier as well, a brown pannier like that, that is... It's very comfortable. But the seats are surprisingly comfy on these, aren't they? Stunning. Scram 411. Continental. Continental with higher bars there. Oh. And... Oh. Look inside. I tell you what, just in case that sounds too loud, I think Royal Enfield would do the second best dealers out of anyone. That is a stunning looking dealership. Monica, come on, let's go. Wow, that is a stunning one. That's the classic 350 in baby blue. I've never seen that color in the flesh. But just the fact that they follow the color round from the side panel to the tank to all of this headlamps around here. That's such a true nod to the original. I mean, it's just a, it's a thing of beauty. I wouldn't have considered this color before seeing it in the flesh. But I would genuinely consider that color. That is, I mean, it's, it's a <laughs> motorbike in its art. It's stunning. Also, the, I mean, the dealership here. Royal Enfield are going really focusing up just on the most beautiful dealerships. You know, it really makes you want to come in, have a look at the gear, it's fantastic. Interception, the black, black, red and gold in the middle as well. That's a really beautiful color combo in that. Mm -hmm. Stunning looking bike. And this is a special edition, isn't it? No, actually, almost well spotted. I think that's actually standard. Oh, Just standard it? chrome tank with a bit of black on the top. It's not, I think, I don't think it's special edition, but you're right, it looks very much like the new special edition Triumphs. That's a stunning bike with the chrome there. Really beautiful. And look at the tanks. Just polished, I guess, polished steel tank with a protective layer over the top. That looks so good. Ooh. I've, I've seen something upstairs. That's the classic there. That's the bullet that I've been coming to see, I think. So that's the Flying Flea, proven war horse of the British forces, World War II, and he's actually lifting the bike. Incredible. And that is the... Oh, that's the Redditch factory in the UK. That's how it used to look when they were made in the UK. Wow. Great bits of history there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, I love the sofa. Wow. Imagine working from here every day with your office and that, what would that be? That would be one of the old bullets. See, they're relatively still very similar though. You know, I, I've been looking purely from an investment point of view. I'm not going to lie and say I'm going to get one, but it is interesting as an investment proposition. Look at the old Royal Enfield bullets from maybe about 10 years ago or so. They're probably more expensive now than they were brand new. They're going up in value. That's a brilliant investment if you get a bullet now. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Love that. I love the way they share all of the history. You know, all of the old pictures and stuff like that. And all of the optional extras too. This can't be Royal Enfield. Electric bikes. And they also sell the Caballeros as well. You know what? When I, when I see, I think, I think this is a bullet. This is a properly old one, but when I see the older ones, you know, the new ones look so good. It does actually make me think when I see them in the flesh, mm -hmm. you can just buy new because you get all of that reliability and all of the looks as well. They, they've kept so true to the looks with the new ones. You don't need to worry about getting a vintage necessarily. And I think they're all going to hold their value so well. 
So I'd be more inclined actually to go for the reliability of a new one, just because you, you still get all the looks. You just don't get the kickstart. And I almost missed these. They've got a whole load more bikes parked up here. Two Himalayans. This one is from Trail Riders. So I'm guessing this has done some fairly fun adventures. I still love these Himalayans. And look at this one. Old classic 500, but well used. Rust around the edge, smashed headlamp. And Monica, if you come round to this side, you can see this is not a garage queen. This one has been properly used. Maybe for sale. Do you know, it could be. Could be for sale. Or complete reconditioning. And we almost missed it. All of the Caballeros over there, which share a dealership with Royal Enfield. Of one of these. I did, I did. I actually said at the time it's a, it's a good bike, but I would probably go for the Himalayan or the Scram 411 over that. Although they're, they're perfectly decent bikes, those. <laughs> filmed a ridiculous amount today. I end up spending about 40 minutes in these bike dealerships and the electric bike dealer as well. So let's wrap it up there before we tuck in. If you're interested in going to check out your car or motorbike history, you can click on the link in the written description below. That will take you to Car Vertical. Thank you to Car Vertical for collabing on this video. And thank you so much everyone for coming on. We will see you all in the next one, our last video from Barcelona. See you all then.